So in this video, we're going to be introduced to polar curves. And I'm going to start off by just plotting one. Okay, and the one I'm going to plot is r is equal to 2 cosine theta. So polar functions are of the form of r is equal to some function of theta. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in the values from 0 to pi, going up in intervals of pi over 12, into r equals 2 cosine theta. So I'm going to fill out this table, and then I'm going to plot the points on this graph. Now this graph, what I've done is I've got the pole, the pole here, and I've got the initial line, and each of these lines is separated by an angle of pi over 12. Okay, so let's start off by using our calculator to create this table. So I'm going to go into menu and then... Uh, to number 9 for table and I'm just going to type in f of x equals and 2 cosine theta so 2 times cosine of x in this case making sure you calculate radians of course and we want to start at 0 and end at pi and I'm going to go up in steps of pi over 12 okay so we get 2, then 1.93. I'm just going to go to two decimal places. 1.73, 1.41, then 1, then 0.52, then 0, then minus 0.52 then minus 1, then minus 1.41, then minus 1.73, then minus 1.93, and then minus 2. Okay, so let's see what we get when we plot those points. I'm going to try and do this accurately. Um, so I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to be using 20 centimetres for that. Okay, so I'm going to start off 20 centimetres away from the pole um, with the angle zero. Okay, so or a length of two rather. Okay, so that's my first point. Then I've got uh, pi over 12, 1.93. So, about 19.3 centimetres, something like there. Okay, then we've got 1.73, so 17.3 centimetres. It's about there. Okay, then we've got 1.41, so 14.1 centimetres, 1, 2, 3, 4, 14.1, so it's about, about there. Uh, then we've got 1, about there. Uh, then we've got 0.52. there. Okay, so we can see it's coming around this way. Then we've got zero. Okay, so uh, I was zero at that point. Then we've got 7 pi over 12 minus 0 0.52. Now the angle of 7 pi over 12 would put us on this line, right? So this one here. But because what R, R is negative, that actually puts us uh, down here on this line. So I need to measure about 0 0.52 down here. So 
Oh, actually, it's going to be quite difficult to do on that one. <laughs> it's uh, due to using such a long ruler on this, I think. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's about there. About there. Okay. Uh, then we've got minus one. Now, again, 2 pi over 3 would put me on this line here, but because r is negative, I'm actually down here. So minus 1 is down here. OK. Then we've got minus 1.41. About there. Uh, then we've got one point, minus 1.73. About there. And then minus 1.93. It's about there. Like that. Okay. So. There are points plotted, and we've got the pi minus 2, which puts us in that position there. Okay? So, um, if I now join these up, the way, uh, the convention that we use is that if R is positive, then we use a solid curve, and when R is less than 0, when it's negative, we use a dotted curve. Okay, that is the convention that is often used. Okay, I'm going to use that here. So actually, it starts off solid like that, and then is dotted for that part of the graph. Now, if you continued it round two pi. Okay, what's going to happen is this is going to uh, come back round minus 1.93. So if you put in, um, uh, what would that be, 13 pi over 12, we get minus 1.93. So it's coming back round here, but dotted, okay, for the next part. Then when it gets here, you'll get uh, to past the uh, 3 pi over 2 point, and then it will be solid again. Okay, because of the nature of cosine. So if you were to plot it like this, where you've got uh, theta and r, you know that the curve's going to look like this. So there's your 3 pi over 2. There's your pi over 2. So for this part, portion of the graph, it's dotted. And for this part, it's solid, and for that part, it's solid. Okay? So that's why the curve looks like that. And what we found is that actually here, we've got a circle. Now, we can tell that it's actually a circle, because, I mean, just because I've plotted the points doesn't mean this is completely accurate, right? Um, so I've done it a lot of this freehand. Um, now you can see this in Cartesian form, and we can show that it's actually a circle if we multiply through by r. So we get r squared is equal to 2r cosine theta. Now the reason why I would do that is because r cosine theta I know to be x. The r I know is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So because that's squared, I just get x squared plus y squared on the left hand side. And the r cosine theta is just x, so we get 2x. So then, if I subtract the 2x from both sides, complete the square on the x's, and rearrange, I can see that this is a circle centred at the point 1, 0. So, 1, 0. Okay. With radius 1. 
Okay, and so I can see that actually what I've traced out here is a circle. Um, so the reason why we might investigate polar curves is actually not only can you get quite beautiful looking curves, um, and we will investigate some of those properties and those types of curves um, in the next few videos, but it also allows you to write down an equation of a curve uh, like a circle in a much more straightforward way than what we've been used to. Okay, so this is a much neater way of writing down the equation of a circle. So we're going to investigate what these look like in the coming videos.